Hey, what's up guys? So we're back here with Ben from Safe Drive Solutions and we're gonna be talking about installing dash cams in EVs. So we're here in my Kia EV9. This is our first EV and I've had a lot of questions about installing in dash cam or installing in EVs. Like they have these huge batteries inside to power the car. And I was curious, like, can you use those huge batteries to power your dash cam? Uh, that said, I've done a lot of research. It doesn't look like that's a possibility. So let's go ahead and talk about dash cams and EVs. So is that possible? Is it safe? Like what's the story with that? Yeah, I mean, I've actually owned two EVs myself. I used to have a 2020 Kia Soul EV. Now I got a 2023 Volkswagen ID4. So I work on EVs all the time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think the wiring is completely different from a normal ICE vehicle, as we like calling it, right? Internal combustion engine. But most of them are actually exactly the same. Like, for, for instance, if I do a Kia Nero or a Kia Nero EV, the wiring is not different at all for when I installed the dash camera. So there's a lot of misconception. And like I was talking to you about this, like I get a lot of times people who buy like Toyota Lexus vehicles always tell me like, well, I don't know if you can install it in mine. It's a, it's a hybrid or it's an EV. And to be honest with you, there's actually no difference in wiring for us installing a Toyota Lexus on an EV, on a hybrid and on an actual normal internal combustion engine vehicle. The only difference for us is key start or push button start. Mm -hmm. That is the only difference for what wiring we go to. Hmm, okay, well, what about like, there's a huge battery in the dash cam, or in the car rather, why can't we use that to like, power the dash cam while we're parked. So that battery is actually mainly for the gas tank of the vehicle. So so a lot of people get confused because I, I was even really confused when I first had my first vehicle because I thought like, shouldn't it just use that battery? Mm -hmm. But that battery is like, I don't know, it's something ridiculous, like 480 volts Depending, or 600 yeah. volts, something yeah. crazy not like that, right? 12 volts like these things are designed for. I am not a professional on that. I just know how to install dash cameras in them. Realistically, they're not meant to, to support that. Now, there, there were some stuff that, that, that I pointed out to you that we, we did talk about where uh, some, a, a lot of the EVs, when you are plugged in, will charge your accessory battery mm -hmm. on top of your actual EV battery, right? The accessory battery under the hood. So I know there's some people out there that say, I don't need a battery pack because my accessory battery will charge all the time. I was curious about that. And I even have like a little orange LED that lights up on the dash when the big yeah. battery is charging the accessory battery, even yeah. like the car is turned off or something. Yeah, but the problem is, is for, I haven't actually been able to verify this on whether or not that is legitimate. I know on my Kia Soul EV, it did not always charge that accessory battery. Oh, interesting. And I know this, because I had a dash camera and I actually killed my battery, but I also didn't start my vehicle for a while, but I did have it plugged in. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know if it actually did work or not. Oh, so you had it plugged in and it still killed the 12 volts battery? I had a problem with the accessory battery, yeah. Oh, interesting. So I mean, there's no guarantees, right? I mean, batteries do unfortunately fail over time. Yeah, like my hope when I got the car was like, oh, this is gonna be great. I've got this massive battery. Why do I need a dedicated dash cam battery exactly. pack? Or even like when I've got the car plugged in and charging, can I somehow tap into that and charge if I do do a dedicated battery for the dash cam? Maybe the wall could charge my dash cam battery pack. So I'm now charging my battery while parked instead of using it. Yeah, I know you were asking me about uh, like tapping in to the, the charging outlet. Like, could we find a way to do that? And And honestly, it's a really cool idea. And if, if somebody knows how to do that, that would be pretty awesome to know about. Yeah. But for me, I was like, I'm really kind of worried about this. Cause if I like, if I tapped into the wrong circuit, I mean, we could take out your whole battery. And I mean, yeah. when you hear about this stuff in the news, people are, you know, what is it? 50, $60,000 for some people getting these, these EV batteries replaced. Like what we're talking about right now, we're not doing that to, to scare you. We're just talking about like a, a scenario that was a little extreme. Like it was a cool idea. Yeah. Like I wanted to do it. Yeah. I mean, I asked a bunch of installers and yeah. nobody's like, no, I don't want to go around the high voltage system. <laughs> I asked Kia directly, like their engineers, their techs. And they're like, yeah, don't, that's not what it's for. Like it's not designed that way. So maybe some cars, I don't know, but haven't figured out a way to do it yet. I don't think I've seen anybody who's done that. Yeah, we, but. I mean, doing on EVs though is, in my opinion, completely safe if you know what you're doing, right? And when we installed, we installed a dedicated circuit. We typically, we put it on like a 12.2 volt low battery protection or higher, right? Because we don't want to have that. And then we always recommend if you're not using a battery pack to put it only on three hours. Don't put it on for like long periods of time. But the reason why we do that is because we don't want people to end up with with a bad battery because typically the batteries in these evs are very small 
They're, mm. they're not huge. They're, it's not a normal, uh, you know, internal combustion engine vehicle. A lot of those vehicles have bigger batteries, right? They're powering an that. engine. Okay, yeah, I got to right? start the engine. Yeah, like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I like, you know mine in, in my ID4. Like, it's small. Mm -hmm. It ain't big. Oh. It almost looks like something would start a lawnmower. Okay, yeah. I didn't realize <laughs> the batteries would be tinier, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not overly huge, right? But they are fine. I mean, we haven't had any issues with that. I mean, we do. I do Hyundai Ionic 5s. I mean, we have videos, Kia EV6. I have a Nissan Aria video coming out. Is there right? anything about, like, a lot of the different specific EVs that are unique, certain models or brands that you've seen? I know you said they're almost all, like, ICE cars. Probably the only one that we stay away from is Tesla. And the only okay. reason... We don't, we don't stay away from Tesla for not because like we don't want to work on them trust me i want to but we we just find that like tesla seems to be very um hard on people on getting aftermarket stuff done now there probably is ways to do it safely um we're i don't do not want to say that i'm an expert on it so the, the, we're probably the one of the few companies that isn't really doing teslas mm -hmm. but there are a few companies out there that are doing it but i can tell you uh i mean i recently i had a customer i sold a bunch of product to last year and he got it done by a company that specialized in Teslas. And when they installed the battery pack uh, underneath the seat in the Tesla, it, and his power seat moved forward and backwards, it was actually dragging the battery pack forward and backwards. Oh, wow. So I, I, I told him, I'm like, listen, I don't, like, I, I don't know who installed this for you, but like, and I understand they work on Teslas all the time, but that's not really safe to have a battery pack moving back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. So that's just my feedback. We stay away from Teslas. They're a little bit harder to work on, a little bit more difficult. And we're afraid that we could possibly hook up into a wrong circuit and cause some sort of safety issues with the vehicle. So mm -hmm. that's just why we stay away from it. Makes sense. So. Makes sense. So I know you said earlier that like a lot of the EV cars fundamentally are like the same as like your internal combustion engine. Yes. So I had a lot of questions for you specifically about just dash cam installation in general that wouldn't pertain to just EVs. So yes, 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 yes. I guess for part three of our discussion, <laughs> I want to do kind of like a Q&A. My phone over just overheated and shut off, so i got to wait for it to cool off a little bit. But let's go ahead and do like a, a quick Q&A. <laughs> Speaking of cameras overheating. That's up, that's up. Yeah, two of my cameras have already overheated in the sun. Dash cams are on. This GoPro is still going. But let's go ahead and do another video talking about uh, maybe dash cam questions that I've got for you, things that I've sure, been learning. Yeah. Yep, cool. Now, we're here, here in a... Uh, in a Kia EV9. We're here, here. Huge batteries inside to power the car. Camera's Camera too hot. too hot. Okay. Well, I guess we're not gonna use that one. 